fired Pierre Kramer as head coach. Well, Penguins vice president... Coming up, a big sports day around town. Penguins name a new head coach, and it's NBA draft day. Two pit players expected to go in the first or second round. Another bad accident at a dangerous intersection in Shaler Township. Also, Yvonne Zanos and Paul Long take us on an hour town visit to Edgewood. Afternoon, I'm Jim Scott. And I'm Susan Davies with a little rain in the forecast. Indeed. Action News at Noon is next. From Channel 4, WTAE TV in Pittsburgh, this is Action News. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. A big day in sports around town. There's a new man at the position of head coach of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Guy Junker has the word in this report from the Weston William Penn Hotel. Guy, I understand that he's no stranger to the organization. No, that's for sure, Jim. In fact, Gene Ubriaco will be named as the 10th coach in Penguin history in their 22 seasons in the NHL. And he was an, a, play, a player on the original Penguin team back in 1967-68. And he's coached the Baltimore Skipjacks, who for a time were the Penguins' top farm club. So the positive note is he's very familiar with a lot of the players in the organization. The funny thing is he had his worst season ever just this past year with the Skipjacks when at one point they lost 18 straight games. But that's partly because they lost their affiliation with any NHL team. He's also a very good friend of uh, Tony Esposito, the Penguins director of uh, hockey operations. They grew up together in Sault Ste. Marie, so uh, it's not exactly a surprise. But he certainly has a big challenge ahead of him. The Penguins, one of the best young teams in all of the NHL. They just have been unable to make the playoffs. We'll have all the details coming up on Action News at 6 o'clock, and we hope to talk with Gene then. Back to you. Sky and he's at Three Rivers. The Penguins name a new coach. And some pit stars are headed for the NBA. We'll tell you who picked him. The next time somebody tries to tell you a franchise is dead, remember this scene. Pittsburgh has baseball fever after the Pirates' big win on national television last night. The Pirates expect another huge crowd tonight. I would like to see the Penguins be like this city, ambitious and aggressive. And after a long search, the Penguins finally name a new coach. The Philadelphia 76ers select Charles Smith of the University of Pittsburgh. And two former Pitt stars are picked in the first round of the NBA draft. And we'll be along in just a couple of minutes with more in last night's game, including a live interview with the umpire who caused lots of excitement with that controversial call. But the Bucks aren't the only ones in the sports spotlight tonight. Coming up later on Action News at 6, Guy Junker will introduce us to the man who the Pens hope will lead them to the Stanley Cup. Charles Smith and Jerome Lane of Pitt are NBA bound. Albie Oxenreiter has a report from the NBA draft in New York. And how would you like to make $240,000 a second? We'll look back at two guys who did that without even breaking a sweat. Their big sports stories coming up tonight. They include a live interview with the new head coach of the Penguins, Gene Ubriaco, and we'll also go live to Oakmont Country Club for day two of the Family House Invitational. Bob Pompiani and Stacy Smith are standing yes, at right bat. About that, yeah. Okay, Kevin, thanks, thanks. a lot. Sure. I know you've got to talk about the, uh, the Buccos, John, but I think it was Lauren Mann over the weekend who said Tyson in the first round. He predicted it over the Didn't weekend. Really? The yeah. man's a genius. Yeah. I said Tyson would win, but so did 500 million other people. But <laughs> in the, the first, first round, round uh, let's give him a bozo button or something. Right. We'll go live to the ballpark where the Buccos are getting ready to play the Mets again, and we'll hear from the Penguins' new coach and a former pit star is heading to Tinseltown. Told the phrase, what goes around, comes around, huh? Yes, yes. This guy played for the Penguins before back in 1967. Now he's going to coach him. The new man is here for the Penguins. He's Gene Ubriaco, who's been coaching the AHL Baltimore Skipjacks the last five seasons. Here's Ubriaco's record at Baltimore, which was a Penguins affiliate until last season. That 88 horrendous record needs an asterisk. Ubriaco was playing with a bunch of miscasts last year. When Ubriaco was introduced to the media today, he was pelted with questions about the pressures this job entails. The pressure to make the playoffs or else. Coaching is a pressure situation. It, it, and uh, I wouldn't be here if, 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 you know, I didn't realize there was going to be pressure and, and, and live with it. Uh, that's part and parcel of coaching. And, uh, and in this situation, obviously, it, it may be a little greater. Uh, it is greater because the team came so close and could have been there maybe the last couple of years. 
Good luck, Gene. Game two of the War of Three. Chris Sports. And the Pens are hoping number three will be the charm. We'll talk with the third man to coach the hockey team in three years. Also ahead tonight for the have a new boss. They hired a new coach today. His name is June, uh, Gene Ubriaco. Gene, uh, past five years with the Baltimore Skipjacks, and after ten weeks of looking, Tony Esposito found his man in an old friend from his hometown, a man who is no stranger to the organization. We got our good core, like I said, with Ubi, Eddie Johnson, Schinkel, our owner, and we're going to put it together. The assistant coach, Rick Keogh, and uh, we're just going to work now and get a, a whole plan of attack and in August set up our own ice activities and everything and and really get it going this year. Pressure on him. Gene joins me now live. First of all, Gene, congratulations to you. And people are going to say that because you and Tony are old friends, uh, that that's the reason that you're there. So tell me about that part of it. Oh, Tony means business. And I'm not here because we're friends. I'm here because I better win. And, and that's why we're here. Obviously, that is the situation. Your contract is for two years, but uh, the pressure is going to be on, I'm sure, even as a first-year coach for your club to make the playoffs, right? Well, there's no qu no question about that, but we've got some pretty darn good guns here, and uh, it's going to be great to be a part of this organization. It's really coming together. I think the cards are all falling into place right now. Had you almost given up any hope of coaching in the NHL uh, as things went last year when you had a chance and it didn't work out? Well, you might. You know, I, that kind of occurred a little bit when I got aced out when they traded for a first-round pick, the Rangers did, for Bergeron last year. And I was awfully disappointed at that point. But, but hey, um, you got to be persistent. I keep telling the players that, and, you know, you can't be a hypocrite. Thank God I, I just kept on being persistent, and, and here I am. All right, Gene, thank you very much. Best of luck to you. Thank you. All right. Gene Ubriaco, he is the new coach of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Me or that's the expense account for some of those Alcasan junkets. Woohoo! Sure, oh, one of those right, deals there. <laughs> Hockey time. If slow, <laughs> if slow and steady truly wins the race, then Tony Esposito has probably come up with a winner. After two months of deliberation, the coach the Penguin general manager was looking for was no further than the old neighborhood back in Sault Ste. Marie. Esposito today named childhood buddy Gene Ubriaco, Penguin organization, having played for them and coached for them at the minor league level. Guy Junker is with the new Penguin coach live at the Civic Arena. Guy? Stan, this guy's always been a bridesmaid, never a bride before. He was under consideration when they hired Bob Barry four years ago, last year when they hired Pierre Kramer, almost had the New York Ranger job last year. Then they made the trade with Michelle Bergeron, but uh, now you're back to the NHL, Gene, and I guess this is the biggest day of your career. No kidding. It certainly is, and, uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's quite unusual, but uh, Pittsburgh was where I came as a player and, and kind of fulfilled a dream as a player, and here I am in Pittsburgh again uh, fulfilling another dream, and so... Uh, it may be a most livable city, but for me, it's a dream city, I guess. Well, we talked to your new boss, Tony Esposito, uh, earlier today, and we asked him in 20 words or less to tell us why he decided to hire you. He's intelligent, hardworking, uh, a teaching type of a person, and uh, he really has a, a deep-down uh, feeling for players. And Nice to have that kind of support from your boss. Oh, that's excellent. You know, if you've got to have a big job ahead of you, it's nice to have some big support. And I think uh, that's the key to, uh, to us winning. I think we're an organization. I think the cards are all falling into, into place. We certainly have great ownership. We've got everything that it takes. Now we have a strong leader, Antonio, and you know what we've got on the ice. So uh, I think uh, I'm very fortunate to be here, and uh, it'll be an organizational situation where everyone will take part, and, and hopefully we'll all win together. Okay, good luck to you, Gene, and the Penguins. And Stan, will have more on the new coach of the Penguins tonight at 11 o'clock. Back to you. Thanks, Guy. Coach in the last three years today. And for the second time in a row, he comes from the minor leagues. He's Gene Ubriaco, who's been coaching the AHL Baltimore Skipjacks the last five years. Until last season, Baltimore was a Pittsburgh affiliate. Ubriaco's a former NHL player who played in Pittsburgh and with Tony Esposito in Chicago. He's coached some of the current Pens at Baltimore. I have players that have played for me before, and I think that'll help let them know what I'm like. Uh, I, I, the closer we get and the quicker we get together, organization, players, coach, the quicker we're going to be successful. We got to know each other in 1969-70 with the Blackhawks. He joined our hockey team, I don't know, on a trade from Oakland, I think, for about three quarters of a season. And it impressed me about him in those days. He's, he would sacrifice anything for the team to win and everything. 
and he'd help the guys out even though he wasn't playing that much. The organization for a long time, Gene Ubriaco, he got a two-year contract from Tony Esposito, and there will be some questions about the fact that Ubriaco came from the same neighborhood that the Espo brothers grew up in in Sault Ste. Marie. That had nothing to do with it. I think it was, I, I made a gutsy move on getting, the, just because I knew him pretty well and a friend, I made a move that I thought is going to help this organization now. The Pittsburgh Penguins, the reason for these op opportunities is that the Pittsburgh Penguins are owned by a man that builds, and what he builds lasts. Uh, his son is a winner. The 49ers have proven that. My new boss, uh, Tony, is a Hall of Famer. Uh, he's well prepared. He has a lot of drive. And most importantly, he has a lot of guts. Uh, I would like to see the Penguins be like this city, ambitious and aggressive. Now, well, most years are having they've ever had. The Penguins have a new coach to hopefully lead them out of the scrap heap of the NHL. 50-year-old Gene Ubriaco, who was a member of the original Penguins team back in 1967, was named the coach today. And live on Action News at 6 o'clock, he told us this was the biggest day of his career since he finished playing. It certainly is, and, uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's quite unusual, but uh, Pittsburgh was where I came as a player and, and kind of fulfilled a dream as a player, and here I am in Pittsburgh again uh, fulfilling another dream. And so uh, it may be a most livable city, but for me it's a dream city, I guess. Ubriaco was named Coach of the Year in four of his nine minor league seasons. The last five he spent with the Baltimore Skipjacks of the American Hockey League. In four of those seasons, the Jacks were the Penguins' top farm club. So he already has coached many of the Penguins' younger players. Uh, there's six or seven or eight of them that I've had some time with, <laughs> some more than others. And uh, it'll be nice because we'll catch them now where they were, wanted to be when they were with me. Ironically, Gene reaches his coaching goal the year after the Skipjacks lost a record number of games as an independent. Hopefully, he won't have to call on that experience with the Penguins. Guy Junker, Channel 4 Action News. Thanks, Guy. So it is that the boys of fall need some practice before they can become the boys of winter. Tonight, the Penguins continue to warm up for the regular season with an exhibition game against the Montreal Canadiens at the Civic Arena. In the first period on the power play, Zarly Zalapski to Mario Lemieux. Zalapski fans, but Danny Quinn passes back to Robbie Brown. Brown with the goal, the Penguins lead 1-0. Now it's 1-1 late in the first. Paul Coffey carries the puck to Mario. He scores the goal. Pens lead 2-1 after one period of play. But in the second period, a scramble in front of the net. Mike Keane with a backhander ties the game at two apiece. And the Canadians almost won it in regulation. Late in the third period, Wendell Young, a great save on Ryan Walder and saves the day. So they go into overtime. And Paul Coffey on the power play scores. The Penguins beat Montreal 3-2 in overtime. The Pens are undefeated in preseason. I don't think we played anywhere as well as we could tonight. We're a little sluggish out there, but that tends to happen during exhibition. You get your you get your hump days and your hump games, and tonight was that for us. We had to climb a little bit of the hill, and we came out with a win, and I guess that's all that counts. Nearly 13,000 at the arena tonight. The flashiest car in the world might look very pretty sitting in your driveway, but if the engine doesn't run properly, what good is it? Well, the same thing with a football team. It's the guys covered with dirt under the hood that make a football team go. Albie Oxenreiter explains. What you saw last week was 373 yards on the ground and five rushing touchdowns. What you saw last week was a well-protected Darnell Dickerson. What you saw last week was a pit offensive clinic. But what you might not... Remember, Eric, when the Crusher used to refer to Pampero Furpo as having spiders and snakes oh, yeah. and everything in his hairdo? I think that's where they got the song. I believe you're right. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Anyhow, we'll be back next week with another Matt Classic. You pick it. Matt Classic has been brought to you this week by Almond Joy. The hottest thing in professional. And I think sometimes a bad experience for a ball player can motivate him to go on and, and not let those mistakes happen. Early in your career especially, yeah. the guy that, that guy that humiliated him uh, humiliated a lot of people, me inclusive, <laughs> a guy by the name of Lyle Alzado. So, uh, and enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, he did. I did. You know, he, he, a lot, speaking of Lyle Alzado, he got that big, tough beard. Where, you know, he's got the big biceps, wears his sleeves rolled up. He's a pussycat. He's a pussycat. Okay. Yeah. I mean, inside the white lines, he's an animal. Outside, one of the nicest people you'd ever run into. There's Ilkin. 
good look at him and Chuck Knoll said he was impressed with the depth that he did have at offensive line so he might be able to, to sustain an injury a little bit better than some of the other teams in the league. And Buddy Ryan had an interesting thing to say about offensive linemen. He said he would not spend a first round draft choice for an offensive lineman. He said you get guys that uh, nobody else wants and are willing to work their tails off for you. You can make great offensive linemen. Well, out. basically, basically what he said is offensive linemen as a whole are overachievers because they don't get paid a lot of money. They don't get a lot of the limelight. They don't get a chance to, to enjoy all the perimeters that go around the game. So they really have to have an, uh, an undaunted love for the game. And uh, there's a guy who's played really well. And if, if he is going to be absent for a while from the lineup, I'm uh, going to leave a, a gaping hole on that left side for the Steelers. He's an excellent drive blocker, uh, played in the USFL before coming to Pittsburgh three times all league in the USFL. And gets a nice hand from the crowd as he gets to his feet. You can obviously tell he's in some pain. And all we can do is try to get you a report as soon as possible and hope that Buddy Idolette is just going to be out of this game and nothing else. Hey, Lenny, if you have any doubt how strong the Steelers are, Idolette is no light person. And uh, the, the guys on the Steelers team carrying him off. So, uh, you know, you're talking about a guy who's 6'4", 262. You know, turf compounds that a little bit because the yeah. leg just it just it gets stuck there and it just has no move to it and I hate this stuff. No release. Now I'm on record. 318 to go first quarter, no score. Eagle fall at their own 48. Fires across midfield to about the 59 yard line. Hardy Nickerson number 54 had a hold of the leg and wouldn't let go. Got another stealer down. Boy, don't you just hate to see this? There's a man who can't be very happy. You know, the, wor the worst thing that happens to a coach during preseason is when you want to get a look at your players and they get hurt. Number one, you have to yeah. get the guys who are going to start for you some playing time. Number two, you're looking for other guys to make your ball club, to contribute to your ball club, and then they get nicked up, and it takes away practice time. And that's that's Greg Lloyd hob hobbling off, but at least he's under his own power, and he's just not happy. Uh, he's playing that right outside the linebacker spot as they work on Idolette. Uh, that Mike Merriweather vacated. Merriweather still holding out, and the Roonies are not going to renegotiate his contract. They simply don't do that. Uh, they have made him an offer to extend his contract for more money, but they're not going to renegotiate what he has right now. Greg Carr, 